In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Our Lady Loves You. My name is Father Zachary of the Mother of God, and we are presenting these episodes so that you can become the saint that you're created to be in God's love. We do recognize the gospel is the high point of the liturgy of the word. It's surrounded by marks of respect. There's the book of the gospels, there's incense. We stand as a sign of respect. We remember in the Middle Ages, knights would draw their swords and remove their cloaks and gloves. Men would remove their hats and princes would take off their crowns when the gospel was proclaimed. We make a sign of the cross on the forehead, the lips, and the heart, meaning may the Lord be in my mind and on my lips and in my heart. We do this before the reading of the gospel. Completed by the phrase, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After the priest proclaims the gospel, he kisses the gospel and says, may the words of the gospel wipe away my sins. Beautiful, beautiful. A homily is given. A homily comes from the Greek word for explanation. It dwells on the points from the readings and the mysteries of our faith. It opens up the word, the revelation of God. The homily is to engage people, not to entertain people. Priests are not entertainers. We live in Christ. In Him we live and move and have our being. We're there to exhort and edify and correct, reprove, teach, remand, lift up into the communion of the Trinity. There's the profession of faith. On Sundays and greater celebrations, we have the creed. This creed was not drawn up for the use at the Mass. It actually came from the earliest days because people had to make a profession of faith when they were baptized, just like what happened at our baptism. The one we recite today is from the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451, which combines two earlier councils, the Council of Nicaea 325 and the Council of Constantinople 381. These councils came together in response to the heresies against the Holy Trinity and Jesus Christ. So what we state are the essentials of our faith, the 12 articles of our faith in the first section of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the first part. The first part of the Catechism of the Catholic Church is the faith. The articles of our faith, the 12 articles of our faith. The second section is on liturgy and the sacraments. It's all about grace. The third section is on the moral life, the life of Christ, the Ten Commandments. And the fourth section, or part, is on prayer, four pillars of our life. As we make the profession of faith, we bow at the words, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. The Word becomes flesh and dwells among us as the Holy Spirit comes upon Our Lady. Remember, we stay close to Our Lady who's there at the foot of the cross during the Mass, who holds our hand during the Mass and teaches us as a mother. We have the general intercessions where we pray a prayer of petition to God the Father. We pray for the needs of the Church, for public authorities and the salvation of the world. We pray for the oppressed, and for the needy, the poor, the sick, the persecuted, and we pray for the local community, including the deceased, the dying families, newly married couples, so forth and so on. We come to the next major part of the liturgy, the liturgy of the Eucharist. It's all connected, it's all one. We're prepared now for the celebration of the Eucharist. There's the preparation of the gifts. Bread and wine are offered, they seem to be poor and humble gifts. 
And indeed they are compared to what will be given back to us, Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. But it reminds us that Jesus will accept our offering of our whole lives. And in exchange, he gives us himself. That should humble us. It's also a sacrificial offering. Many times there's money that's offered to be used for the, the poor and the needy and to help the church. Again, though, we should be offering in prayer those things we want to bring to the Lord at this time because we recognize the bread is going to go on the paten, the wine is going to go in the chalice, and it's going to be transformed. We place ourselves in the offering, on the paten, in the chalice, to be offered to God in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We offer our lives, what we possess, our relationships, our difficulties, our joys, our sorrows, everything. When we offer the bread and wine, we say, or the priest says, Blessed are you, Lord. And he goes on, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received these gifts. There's a formula there. It's from God that we receive everything. And we're happy to offer to God. The bread represents man's work with the earth. The plowing, sowing, reaping, the threshing, the baker who kneads the dough. Wow. The wine, which is mixed with water. When it's mixed, the priest says, by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Wow. May we share in his divinity. He who humbled himself to share in our humanity. The water symbolizes our human and natural lives as they are absorbed into the wine and becomes inseparable from it. You notice how there's only like one drop of water put in there though? See, the wine represents the divinity, the water, humanity. Our humanity is absorbed by the divinity. But yet we retain our humanity that is divinized in the sacraments in the church. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. A symbol of our lives, this mixing of the water and the wine, being so joined to Christ that our lives become indistinguishable from His. That's through the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, not, not, just, at that, not just at that moment yet. Because we need to enter into the sacrifice where the priest, Jesus Christ, speaks the words of consecration after the apoclesis, the calling down of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus becomes present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Really, truly, and substantially present. We'll talk about that in the Eucharist. The drop of water mixed with the wine is so small it can't quench a thirst. Joined to Jesus Christ's wine that not only quenches thirst, but also gives joy. There's the washing of the hands. From a practical necessity, in part, because hands were dirty after the priest would incense the gifts. But it became a private prayer of the priest. The priest says, Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Then the priest says, pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We move into the Eucharistic prayer. There's prefaces into these Eucharistic prayers. These are the prayer of Jesus to the Father in the Holy Spirit. They're beautiful. I urge you to look through the sacramentary someday of the Roman Missal. These prefaces are rich. They all begin, the Lord be with you. And people say, and also with you. We say, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And indeed it is. This dialogue has remained unchanged among Christians at Mass since the third century. This formula, this approach. Our hearts and minds are to be raised up to supernatural things. All natural worries, hopes, 
Everything else is to be forgotten at that moment. We enter into the mystery. The preface is usually a litany of praise and thanks and a description of our redemption. There's over 70 prefaces to choose from. For Sundays, weekdays, big feasts, Lent, Advent, Christmas, marriages, funerals, so on. We enter into the Sanctus. Sanctus, Sanctus. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao. The Holy, Holy, Holy. In the Hebrew, Gadosh, Gadosh, Gadosh. In the book of Isaiah, only God is holy. We are reminded that we are before the throne of God's majesty, entering the Holy of Holies. It is as if, it is as if the divide between heaven and earth is removed and we are joined together with all the saints and angels. I get so excited, I start to stumble on some words. It's so amazing, this mystery. We are before the throne of God. Remember what Isaiah said when he went before the throne of God? He was awestruck. He said, woe is me, I'm a sinful man. But the angel came with the charcoal from the altar and purified his lips. This is all God's gift to us. We are not worthy, but Christ calls us. 